I'd like to touch a little bit on one last uh, BTK inhibitor that was uh, mentioned at this meeting. CONCAM gave two presentations, um, and I think uh, the Australians have done a lot of work uh, with this compound, so maybe, Stephen, you can comment on your experience with zanubrutinib and where we think that fits into our treatment. So, so, so zanubrutinib is, again, another second-generation BTK inhibitor. I, I think it, it's uh, similar in side effect profile to a acalabrutinib. Um, it, it, it's, it's um, I think, approved in the US now for mantle cell lymphoma. Um, there's a number of trials in CLO, including at, at ASH 2019, uh, update on uh, the use of the drug in patients with 17p deleted CLL. I, I can say that both acalabrutinib and zanabrutinib in terms of efficacy uh, seem similar to ibrutinib. The difference really is in, in terms of side effects. There's a, there's a, there's a number of head-to-head -head trials which will actually answer uh, whether there is a difference in efficacy. I guess if a drug has a favourable toxicity profile, then uh, adherence may be better and therefore you might see an eff efficacy difference. So we're waiting for those to read out. So I think um, useful drug, um, it, th there's, it, it also seems like a, a reasonable option, um, but follow-up is, is a lot shorter than what we know with ibrutinib. It's going to be. It's going to make it even harder, I think, for us uh, to choose treatments because we're going to have three different, probably, in the near future, uh, available BTK inhibitors. What are some of the things that we think about, and what do you think are going to be the distinguishing features between the different irreversible BTK inhibitors? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the all of the BTK inhibitors we have discussed so far, the abrutinib first generation and the second generation, including the uh, calabrutinib and zenubrutinib. So all of those are irreversible uh, BTK inhibitor because they're binding BTK through covalent binding. Uh, now the, the next generation um, of uh, BTK inhibitors are actually reversible BTK inhibitor. The idea behind that is that uh, for patients who are treated with BTK inhibitor, one of the main resistance mechanism is a mutation in the BTK gene itself at the binding site uh, to the first and second generation BTK inhibitor. So once uh, the BTK acquired that mutation, they're no longer able to bind um, either the first or second generation inhibitors uh, through covalent binding. Whereas the uh, reversible BTK inhibitor, um, for example, one of the presentation at the ASH to, uh, 2019 this year as an oral presentation is Bloxo 305. Uh, so that's one example, and there are several other uh, products that are in the uh, research uh, studying the reversible um, BTK inhibitor. So reversible BTK inhibitor can potentially overcome the resistance um, at the binding site. So because they don't have to bind through covalent binding. Um, and indeed, the abstract that was presented this year actually showed that the LOXO305 was able to even overcome the patient who has a known BTK mutation and known uh, resistance to ibrutinib to show clinical benefit.